Hello, my name is Eric, and I want to do a quick tour of my camper van. I started with a 2021 Ford Transit, and it's the high roof extended body with the dualies in the back, and that was kind of my starting platform. The first thing I did was added this nice big window on the, on the passenger side, which was really nice for uh, visibility, and it also is an awning window, which you can open and have open even in the rain, and it'll um, let a good amount of ventilation in. So that was been really nice. And then coming into the van, I did a similar layout to a lot of what I've seen people do with kind of the kitchen sink cabinet right in the entryway. That seems to work really well. So I kind of copied that and did my sink cabinet here. And then I wanted easy access for filling my 40 gallon freshwater tank and for an outdoor washdown. So I added those uh, behind this little outdoor table that folds down. And those are tucked away and also accessible from the outside if any water splashes, it's not in the in the van. So I thought that was really convenient. And then I didn't want to waste any of the space below this cabinet in this toe kick and uh, step area. So I hid the hose down there. So that's handy there. And then coming in the van here, we can see kind of the kitchen and uh, eating, sitting area. I just used the Ford factory seats. It's the nice 10 way adjustable leather seats. And I put swivels on those to make those the main seating. Um, so those swivel around and then I added a table here for this side where you can uh, work and eat and whatnot. And then I added a little drawer above the fridge, which has built in AC and DC charging. So you can keep all your devices tucked away, kind of hidden away there while you're gone and then also be charged while you're working. And then this workstation also has a light above it um, and a little cubby. I took advantage of a wall pocket there. Um, if you had something in particular that fit well there, I thought that was handy. And then also in this entryway, I have a light switch for the under cabinet lighting. I wanted to have that really accessible just right when you step in, you're well lit and visible. And then further in, um, we we're just moving down the kitchen. We have a nice big storage cabinet there and countertop and then an isotherm 130 fridge freezer which really has a big capacity um, go a long while without needing to restock so that's been really convenient and then as we just move down the kitchen it's yeah the sink again um, with a little cut cutting board it's a nice deep sink i just have a little sponge here and then i have a four gallon uh, hot water heater it's electric so it just runs off my battery bank so when you need hot water, you have that ready to go. And then under the sink, I have a little bucket for capturing gray water. And I do also have that plumbed to wrap around and also feed into where the shower comes out. So that if you did want to mount the tank under the shower, you could capture all your gray water all in that one location. But I've just been using that for my uh, sink water. And then I usually have a trash can in there as well. And then here's just a bunch of drawers for silverware another couple drawers and then this deep one i i made for specifically for this five in one cooker which can air fry and bake and roast and everything so that's convenient to have on the road to open up more options for cooking so that fits nicely there you just put that up on the counter and flip on your inverter and then other cooking surface is this induction cooktop 1800 watt um, cooktop that also runs off my battery bank so that's nice to not need another fuel source or anything and I took advantage of this bump out um, or this pocket in the the wall that went that I was able to um, create this little cubby for a speaker and I have some charging built in there um, and I usually keep oils or spices in there so that's handy and then running all the way along this side I have upper cabinets and on that side as well and I have these nice hinges that are soft close and then also have a strong enough pull on them where they won't rattle um, it takes a fair amount of force to make them rattle and so i don't have any latches or anything so it was really convenient um, lots of storage all the way down the line there and um, i think we'll flip around and look at this side other thing that was important for me was i was going to be living in this full time so i really wanted to have a uh, toilet and shower so uh, it's a full uh, shower with a nature's head compost and toilet and that can I made that so it can be removed in the hallway while you're showering or you can just keep it in there it can get wet so it's been really convenient to um, just make 
van life much more comfortable. Have a nice little teak mat in there and a light mounted in there as well. And then further on the line, you have this step up into the bed, which um, serves as a step. It also goes over my, like I said, 40 gallons of fresh water, so a huge tank. And then I just cut a little sight line in there so you can see what your water level is um, pretty simply there. Coming up onto the bed, um, I kind of made my main control center here. So this is where you control your inverter, flip that on and off, and, in, and control the incoming charging current, um, some switches for the hot water heater and an exterior outlet. And then this is the thermostat for the Webasto um, air top heater, which runs off the gasoline in the van. So that's really handy to, as long as I have gas in the van, then I, I have heat and don't need to carry additional fuel source for that. That's worked really well. And then I have a max air fan, which uh, with that window and the fan, you can create some good ventilation in here. That's been nice. Um, and then I also wanted this, another light switch by the bed here to be able to, when you enter the van, turn on some lights, and then when you're going to bed, turn on lights and not um, not have to get out of bed. And then also in the bed, um, I wanted additional just single lights. If you're just reading one little dimmer light, have lights on each side of the headboard. Um, and I made this headboard similar to the kitchen. I, I took advantage of those little pockets that are in the, the van walls, and I bumped the headboard and the footboard as far as I could to try to get as much um, room lengthwise as I was able to, to be able to sleep this way. Um, so that's, yeah, as far as I was able to get there and still have in, some insulation behind there. And the whole van is insulated with 3M Finsulate, um, as many layers as I was able to get there. And then the roof is insulated with Reflectix as well, as well as the Finsulate. So then moving further to the back, we have more, more cabinets. Um, I routed in this uh, pattern to to mount this cane webbing in, and I really like the look of that. I think it's really nice. And then I built a little bookshelf um, here to do some nighttime reading, and then I have charging in that as well, um, just to be really accessible and not have to deal with finding power with all your devices. Um, more cabinets on this side, and then the last thing probably to talk about in here is this closet area. So there's a closet for lots of room to hang stuff. And then I also have my electrical panel back here. It's really accessible with my AC and DC circuits. So if anything, I have to service anything, it's all right, right there in the closet, but also out of the way. And then I walk this way and show this last little closet piece. I wanted as much counter space and to make this as usable kitchen as possible. So I mounted another countertop section on drawer slides. So you have full range here, um, quite a bit of counter space to work. So that's really convenient and that just tucks out of the way. And then on this drawer, I wanted, I figured it would be handy to have a microwave on the road. So I have that, but I didn't want it permanently out. So that tucks away nicely. And then I wanted my coffee uh, stuff set up. So I have that ready to go right there. Kind of always set up. Um, but then again, out of the way when you're not using it. So that's handy there. And I think the last thing I'll talk about in here is just this roof. The transit van has this curve where it dives down at the end. And I was kind of wondering how to deal with that. And I ended up just kind of taking advantage of it and bending my ceiling um, piece pieces to match that curve um, just for maximum headroom and just to introduce some more curves from all these sharp edges. And um, yeah, I, I really liked how the ceiling came out with the lights mounted in it. It's um, yeah, very functional. And then I think we'll step out and look at more of the exterior in the garage area of the van. So looking up, we have the Fiamma awning, which is super nice when you have that out, this table and you have some chairs and you just cook, you can um, sit out here and be all protected. And that's a really nice feature to have. And then coming around to the back, um, because the van is such a beast to drive around, it's so big, um, but it does have really nice backup camera and technology package and stuff. So it's, it's not, it actually is decently uh, decent to drive around. It has the EcoBoost engine and everything. 
Um, but I wanted a little more convenient way to get around, so I wanted to take my motorcycle. So I, I mounted, um, I just have a motorcycle rack on the back here for it. But what that does is it blocks the back, so then I found a swing arm for it, which allows me to unlatch it there, and then this just swings up and out of the way. And then now I have access to my garage area. You can see this. And for my purposes, I just wanted maximum storage, and these doors open all the way out. I wanted maximum storage back here, um, and specifically for tool storage. So um, I use these pack out, Milwaukee pack out boxes. So I built these drawers kind of to fit these perfectly. Um, and these are additional drawers, so there's real convenient to just have tons of storage there. And then these are all in, um, I made kind of custom drawer slides just using bearings. And so these all come out um, the full length of the bed plus this cabinet. So it's a very, really deep drawer, tons of storage back there. And there's six total drawers. Um, but I also wanted them to be kind of customizable if in the future I did want to haul a bike or something that was taller. These drawers just fully pull out and um, can be fully removed with no trouble. And then you can just have one really tall drawer or on this side, you could, um, yeah, you could leave in and take out drawers as needed for the height of what you're storing. So that's been really convenient to have all that. And I just have these rubber, thick rubber mats there that those um, ride on so that those don't slide around. And then the rest of this area back here, I just have a little more storage in those cabinets and then uh, some cubbies there. And then on this side, I have all my electrical components. So I wanted to be able to go off grid. So I have 375 watts of solar and a 300 amp hour battery bank. And so um, as long as I have decent sunlight, that can supply my power. And then I do have a plug in down here where if I have a short power, I can plug in and that can top off the batteries. And then I also have it connected to the alternator where when I'm when the van's running, then that's charging the batteries. So the batteries stay topped off. Um, and again, I wanted everything really accessible and serviceable. So I have it all mounted here. And if there was any issues, you could pull these drawers out, crawl back in there and service what you need. And then on the other side, I'll have all my plumbing, hot water heater and shut off valves water pump, accumulator tank, everything there. So those can be access, accessed and serviced as well pretty easily. So that's the back. And then I, last thing here is just if I'm working or I pull up to a campsite or something and need light, I mounted exterior lighting here that shines out and is quite bright actually. And then 12 volt power here and uh, just regular AC power there. So you always have power back there. And then this is the last side of the van is just a um, ladder that goes up to the roof rack, which like I mentioned, has solar on the back half. But then that left the front half, which um, I decided to put a rooftop deck. So I made a deck up there, which has been really convenient to be able to go up there and eat dinner, or watch, the, watch the sunset or whatever. I think I'll take the camera up there and, and show what it's like. It's really been worth it to have that capability. It's a beautiful night up here tonight too. You can see that fan and the solar panels tucked really nicely there. It's a beautiful view. And then the rest of the van is all this decking. You can just sit up here and enjoy the view. Thanks for watching.